Welcome to Invest and Play. Today in the garage, we have our 1998 Toyota RAV4 two-door convertible. And today, we're gonna do a short walk around and explanation on why it is the coolest, most fun SUV ever made. Let's go. So the RAV4 in 1996 was offered in a two-door variant from the four-door. And in 96 and 97, it was a two-door hardtop with optional sunroofs. And it had a removable front and rear sunroof. And they were basically just metal panels that you could remove or flip up as this one is flipped up. And then in 1998, they offered the convertible option as well as the hardtop option. And it was brought to the States up through 2000, although the 99 and 2000 two-door RAV4s are almost non-existent. They're extremely hard to find. Uh, the 98s are definitely more common. In 98, they also updated the engine, so they gave it the electronic ignition coils for the uh, four-cylinder motor, which produces 127 horsepower and 132 foot-pounds of torque. And while that might not seem like a lot of power, it's a ton of fun because this little SUV only weighs 2,500 pounds. So power to weight ratio is quite good. It's actually very comparable to the Mazda Miata at different years. So you end up with this funky little SUV that is much more functional than a sports car because you have this huge cargo area. And we removed the rear seats to have even more cargo space. And so you can carry just about anything you can imagine. We hang mountain bikes off the tailgate of it, kind of similar to what you see trucks doing. I'll show you a picture of that. And then it's quite a large cargo space because it's so tall, which makes it really unique. The handling on it is really good because it's four wheel independent suspension. We actually raised this one up with OME lift coils front and rear and then updated the, the suspension with the uh, more advanced uh, gasway shocks and so forth and, and it handles amazing. Even off road, it just soaks up the bumps and it actually does really well. So they offered these RAV4s in a two wheel drive and a four wheel drive version. So this one is actually the two wheel drive version, which surprisingly does amazing off road because all of the weight is up front on the car. So when you're articulating through things, it'll just lift the rear tire. And because the approach angle is so good and the departure angle up here is so good, it's um, you basically drive up and over just about anything you can find. It's also such a short wheelbase that you pretty much won't get high centered driving on any sort of technical terrain. So the four wheel drive version was a unique feature because it had a center differential lock. So unlike most all wheel drive vehicles, it actually would lock in the uh, power distribution, 50% front, 50% rear, which was a really neat feature for back in these day. Most modern cars don't even have this feature, especially not for crossover style SUV. So the weight uh, and the power to weight ratio really makes this thing fun. On road, it, it more feels like it's gonna oversteer than understeer even though it's front wheel drive. And it's probably um, just how the suspension dynamics are set up. So you can hit corners really hard and fast a lot more than you think you would be able to. And it just makes you smile and laugh the whole time. Uh, they did sell these with both a automatic transmission, which would ruin the fun, or like this one has a five speed manual, which is the proper transmission to have for sure. This car actually comes with a number of kind of unique options from the factory. So it's got these um, fender flares, which were kind of a rare option for these front and rear. And then it has these kind of uh, decorative side sills. And it also has the factory trailer hitch step bumper that's in the rear here. Um, it has the, all that have the rear mounted uh, spare tire. And then this one, of course, we've added the 
aftermarket 16 inch wheels and uh, kind of all-terrain style tires and tinted the windows so it kind of gives it a, a kind of more modern updated look to it. This car has been extremely updated. Basically it has just over 100,000 miles on it and when when we got it, it was you know not abused but it was definitely neglected so basically tore down the motor uh, it's got a new clutch rebuilt everything all the seals gaskets hoses all of it was replaced the radiator even the stuff that wasn't leaking or failed on it just because it was getting old so just to keep it from having problems down the road uh, this also has the really rare strut brace which is a factory option on these cars and uh, so it's a really fun little power plant this is a two liter motor now this motor is actually the same base motor that was used in the Toyota Camrys, the Celica. Uh, they had different variants of it from a 2 liter to 2.2 liter. Even the, the slightly larger ones are similar. The Toyota MR2 uses the 2 liter uh, turbo version of this motor, which basically bolts in directly into this car. So there's people who do a turbo motor swap on these, which uh, bumps the horsepower up significantly. I think the stock power on those is around 200, and they're really easy to tune up to the high numbers in the 300s plus. Another thing that makes this car really unique is it has glass headlights. These are not plastic like all the modern cars have, which is great because this car being uh, 20 years old, it still has perfectly clear lenses and these uh, reflectors in here work really well. It's extremely bright headlight for being such an older generation car. I think this is probably the peak of Toyota, both reliability and just overall uh, durability that Toyota ever had because these cars were still built in Japan, unlike the newer ones that are uh, built and assembled in the States and kind of a mismatch. These cars were just bulletproof reliable, just super, super solid. So let's take a look at the inside. What makes this car great is all the different simplistic things that Toyota does. Um, the steering wheel on this is the same one that they use on the MR2 and it's just a great sporty steering wheel. It has a really small airbag in the center. It has just great steering feel. And because this car was getting so old, I actually was able to source from Toyota a factory original steering wheel. So we put a brand new steering wheel in here just to give it that really nice kind of updated, not old feel, as well as the shifter put in a, a nice TRD leather wrapped uh, shifter knob and then updated the shifter lever assembly and replaced the bushings for the shifter at the transmission with brass ones. So it gives it a much a uh, tighter shifting feel and a much more engaging feel. The other options on this car are, are just kind of like small subtle things that Toyota does and, and most people laugh at them nowadays but it has a clock, you know, a digital clock which is always on. I love that. It has a very simple instrument cluster with basically the odometer, speedometer, and your tachometer which has kind of a carbon fiber type uh, finish background to it which is really fun and then you just got your fuel gauge and your uh, temperature gauge the only real lights on here are just the standard dummy lights uh, which being it's a Toyota it rarely comes on you will pretty much never see a check engine light on these type of cars and they just work uh, the dash layout is really simplistic you have really basic heating and air conditioning controls which I guess in this vintage air conditioning was still a feature which was kind of fun it has little fold down cup holders which I guess if you had really miniature drinks you could fit them in there. It also makes for a great spot to hold a cell phone and then we added these little charge ports down here for USB charging. It has a ashtray which seems to be disappearing off the newer cars. I don't know that we'd want anybody smoking in here though. And then this actually is a feature and a pretty rare feature on these is this center console which has a little cup holder and storage. Uh, the standard car doesn't have this little section. It, it's uh, just an additional section that comes in there. So that's a really nice little feature. Uh, it's got a locking glove box which is great because with the top off obviously you know security is an issue 
and then you've got a couple fold down mirror visors, uh, lights that you can turn on, little reading lamps, a uh, door light that goes on and off, and then the sunroof. And this is probably, this makes me laugh because this sunroof assembly is the same one that Toyota has used for, you know, 20 years prior to uh, this car, which is great because they're just so solid, so simple. It's not powered. It's just a flip up lever that allows you to have the ventilation at the top. And then if you squeeze the lever together, you can lift the entire sunroof out. And there's a little catch pin here that uh, keeps it from flying out while you're on the road. But you can basically just take the whole sunroof out, just simple as that. And the other fun thing is Toyota actually puts in the rear door a little sunroof holder for it. So when you have it out, there's a place to store it, which is just really cool. The front passenger seat slides forward, so you have access into the rear. We have a car cover that's a waterproof car cover when we have the top removed that we can put it over the car if it's left out in the sun and we're, we're parked out for a few hours or just to make sure it doesn't get uh, dusty or, or rained on inside. Because obviously with no top, you definitely have to take that into consideration. Now the hard top, we do leave on for part of the winter when it just gets too cold to drive it. But otherwise, being in Arizona, we leave the top off and it is great fun. So when it's colder out, you can just turn on the heater, roll up the windows and it's pretty decent to drive. Now when it's uh, when it's warm out, you pop the sunroof up, take it out, drop the windows, and man, it is like driving a little convertible. It's so much fun. Uh, the fun factor with it is something that you'll never be able to really um, understand with specs. You know, if you're looking at a race car and you see how fast it accelerates or how far hard it corners, uh, this one, the specs are not going to amaze, but it is just, it's almost impossible to drive this and not be smiling or laughing because it's comical in size. Uh, people look at it all the time and have no idea what the thing is, and it's just fun and it's reliable. Plus, it gets almost 30 miles to the gallon. That's just a typical driving. It's about 30 miles to the gallon on this little guy. So it's been a really fun, just little runabout uh, car that we use just to fun trips in and out of town and so forth. Um, now notice these windows on this car are manual, which I think, you know, some kids probably don't even know how to operate them. There's no button there. It actually uh, cranks, you know, to go up and down and there's no power door locks. These are just simple manual door locks, which the car is so narrow, it's really easy to uh, you know, operate either side or unlock them and lock them. Uh, it's just something I love about this car is just the simplicity of it. There's just less to go wrong. There's so little features. You just pay attention, you have fun with the driving experience, and you pay attention to what's around you. You're not distracted by a big old screen in the dash or something like that. Uh, we did update the radio so it has Bluetooth and better speakers just to make it a little bit nicer on longer drives. And this car has been completely kind of restored back up to the original, you know, with trying to keep all the um, original pieces as much possible, anything that we could buy, you know, such as the factory floor mats, stuff like that. So it just kind of makes it a really cool little old car. Uh, also, speaking of manual things, the mirrors are manual. so. Everything is manual, <laughs> so it's a it's a pretty fun little car, and uh, everything works because it's Toyota. All right, so take this little car for a spin here. The first thing you notice with it is, you know, being a four cylinder, it's uh, it's definitely not fast, but it feels very spirited and very peppy without drives and when it revs up over 4,000 rpm it kind of has a little bit of kick to it you feel it kind of kick in but the transmission is really what makes it so engaging and so much fun it's just a great throw sh shifting transmission and it's it's not sporty but it's just fun and it's so engaging the steering wheel and the steering is just so tight in this car it uh, makes it almost comical driving it because you just think, is this really an SUV or is this a little 
you know, sports car. What is this thing? But you feel it, it's a little bit more top heavy, obviously, than a sports car, and being lifted, it's even more so. But it's handles and it corners really hard, a lot harder than what you would think, especially at uh, roundabouts and whatnot. The RAV4 story, tell us about it. So several years ago, I wanted a manual SUV. And so we started looking around and we found that the RAV4s had a manual SUV um, up through the early 2000s. And we found a 99 four-door RAV4, which was an L and it was so well taken care of. And I loved it so much. We named it Ravi and we had it until recently, but that car is what inspired this car because it was so much fun to drive with two do four doors we wanted to see what it drove like with two doors and it is absolutely both of them are just a blast yeah because these cars are so hard to find it was a huge search yep. across the whole u.s <laughs> for months and months and i even uh, drove down to california from uh -huh. oregon to try to buy one and it colorado it was was yeah we actually bought a uh, another one that was even more rare than this one it was a it was a four wheel drive hard top uh that was a 98 so those are really really low low production volume and there's very few of them still in around uh but anyways we had uh this one actually show up in the portland oregon area when we were living up there and it was definitely kind of in rough shape as far as just uh, being neglected. It, it wasn't beat up though. It had all the original panels on it, all the original VIN stickers. I'll post a picture of what it looked like. It was just leaking from everywhere. A lot and of leaks. to drive it four hours well, home. Well, <laughs> okay, the leaks, the leaks were the all dark. from the engine. So it was leaking gear oil, it was leaking engine oil, it was leaking was transmission, leaking. it was leaking everywhere. Yeah. And uh, inside it was fine. You know, the, the, true. the car, 100% true. Um, the thing, the reason I bought it was because all the original VIN stickers were on it, all the original panels, yeah. all the original paint. The inside wasn't thrashed, it was in good shape. It was just uh, mechanically, it hadn't been used um, and maintained very well. And it didn't have any miles, it was just yeah. over 100,000. So I figured it was yeah. worth fixing it up. It, and it's so much fun. I love to drive Ravi. So yeah, after we got it, basically tore it down and completely redid everything. So it was a complete kind of overhaul just to make it, the goal was to make it so it was the same as owning this car when it was brand new mm -hmm. back in the day. So you didn't have to think about it reliability wise or just all the things that kind of wear and get irritating with an old car. So basically just stripped down everything, the inside, the motor, the outside, stripped it all down, replaced everything that was kind of showing wear or that was gonna possibly cause problems for it and then redid it all. So it was, mm -hmm. I think around $9,000 in parts to do the whole project. Quite extensive. But now it's been just great. We've had it for about two years now and it's it always works. It's just fun and it's great, it's so great. People are shocked, seriously, when we go through roundabouts because they can't keep up with us. It's really, really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's surprisingly good, suspension and handling. And, uh, small and it is funny when, you know, guys, especially around here, because we were in Scottsdale area, you know, we'll be driving around their, you know, fancy, uh, you know, Land Rovers and Lamborghinis and stuff like that. And you know, people just, uh, you know, they can't, they have they to do a second at look. They because they have no idea what it is and they it's can't so quite weird. comprehend what it is. Yeah, everyone kind of stares at it. It's the funniest thing. Yeah, it's a great little fun car that we've uh, really enjoyed a lot. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just a fun, it's weird, comical. quirky car <laughs> that is, actually pretty rare and it's getting more rare these days. Uh -huh. And it was kind of funny because our neighbor, uh, old neighbor from my old house in Oregon, he uh, came over one day when I was working on it and he said, so I've never seen one of these before. And I said, yeah, they're really rare. And he said, are they rare as in there's not very many of them? Or is it rare as in desirable rare? And I said, <laughs> Yeah, there's not very many of them. <laughs> so I can't say they're really worth a whole lot. 
at this point. Maybe at some point, someday they will be, but it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's a great fun car to have and own fun and drive. Fun factor is totally there. Yeah. It's so it's, if you're looking for a weird, fun, funky little car mm -hmm. that is unusual, easy to repair, cheap to maintain, yeah. fun to drive, economical, there's nothing like this car. It, it, there's nothing like it. Suzuki is probably the closest thing, but they just don't even have a candle to the reliability and just the fun factor that this car has. This one is just so much more tossable and just light and playful and fun. And uh, it's all of it. You know, you look at Toyota, how they did the uh, fabric and upholstery in it. It's just random splotches of color and the original decals on it were just humorously funny and they even had a a purple one that they sold it was just they just did it for fun and that's what this car yeah. is really about this car is about fun so thanks for watching checking out yes. our 98 two-door RAV4 convertible fun car stay tuned for our next videos if you liked this be sure to hit the little like and subscribe button and uh, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. <sighs> it's hard not to laugh and smile while you drive this car. It's just so good. It's totally true. It's a little go-kart and it's a lot of fun.